today we will discuss about the topic barriers to effective communication. The main objectives in this lesson are to understand the definition and purpose of communication, barriers to effective communication and to understand the categories in barriers to effective communication that are physical and environmental barriers, psychological barriers, social and cultural barriers, linguistic and semantic barriers, organizational barriers, message related barriers and other barriers. Let us now discuss the definition and purpose of communication. Communication can be explained as the process of exchanging information, ideas and thoughts between two or more people. Communication involves the process of transferring information or knowledge from one party to another party and is completed only after it has been received or understood accurately by the other party to whom the message is intended. According to McFarland, communication is a process of meaningful interaction among human beings. More specifically, it is the process by which meanings are perceived and understandings are reached among human beings. Communication occurs in various forms such as verbal, non-verbal, visual and written. Communication is essential to connect to others and build strong relationships. As man is a social animal, communication is extremely important for human beings in facilitating their expressions of emotions, feelings, thoughts, values, opinions and beliefs to other people. Communication also plays a major role in motivating and inspiring people to achieve goals and to make decisions. In organizations, communications is significant in ensuring the flow of information to the right person at the right time and to coordinate the employee's efforts to achieve organizational goals. It is also important in leading and managing people, boosting morale, accepting change and inevitably it is the basis for any action plan. Despite the best interests of sender and receiver to communicate, several barriers inhibit the effective exchange of information. Any disturbance or hindrance that affects the process of communication may be referred to as barriers to communication. Barriers to communication are also referred to as noise in communication. The process of communication begins with the sender encoding or drafting the message, then choosing the right channel or medium of communication to send across the message to the receiver who then decodes the message to decipher the meaning and the whole process is completed only after the receiver sends a feedback to the sender or responds accordingly to the message. It is vital to understand the process of communication as the barriers to communication can occur at any stage of communication. Barriers to communication are categorized into various types. The first barrier to communication is physical or environmental barriers to communication. Physical barriers are the barriers which are present in the environment where the process of communication is afoot. Physical or environmental barriers distort the communication by interfering from the outside or from an external field. They differ with different places and situations. Physiological barriers are related to the physical health condition or physiological functioning of senders and receivers involved in the process of communication. For example, if a person is experiencing deafness or any hearing difficulty, it can become a barrier to communication. Inability to read and write due to a physical condition is also a part of physiological barriers. Some of the physical or environmental barriers which are commonly observed that hinder the process of communication. The first one is noise. Noise can occur from the environment due to several factors such as traffic sound, conversation between other people around, noise from machines, appliances affect the quality of communication. Lighting and temperature conditions in the environment can also affect the process of communication. Lighting will have a significant impact on written communication and in processing non-verbal communication. For example, a clerk in the bank might get distracted 
due to inappropriate lighting and send incorrect information while sending a mail to his manager. Time and distance also play a role in communication. People communicating from different places and in different time zones having difficulties in connecting to each other. However, technology has played a vital role in bridging this gap. Timing of sending a message and the time given to respond to the message also becomes salient. Hygiene and olfactory conditions also indirectly affect communication. Unhygienic conditions affect the physical and mental state of the person which in turn has an impact on the initiation and perception of communication. Channel of communication also affects the quality of communication. Face to face communication is the best form of communication. There are high chances of misperception and distortion with respect to telephonic and electronic media communication. The next category of barriers to communication are psychological barriers to communication. Psychological barriers to communication deal with the psychological processes of humans involved in the process of communication. Broadly speaking, this phenomena is related to thinking, memory, perception, mental set, attitude, expectations and personality of senders and receivers involved in the process of communication. Some of the psychological barriers are as follows. The first one is filtering. Filtering is the process of sharing or listening to selective information thereby ignoring a part or some parts of the complete message. This happens in some of the conversations when people decide to share or listen to only important aspects of the information to save time and effort. However, deciding selectively the importance of the message is extremely subjective and personal which could become a barrier in itself. For example, when a student listens to the lecture and shares the content of the lecture with her friend who was absent for the class, she selectively shares the content which she has understood and thinks is important from her perspective. This could become a barrier as she is filtering the original message. The next point is misperception is inappropriately interpreting the message and can be a result of various factors such as inability to hear, expectations, language and semantic barriers, physical barriers, mental and physical health of the individuals. The next point is expectations. Most people listen to what they want to listen rather than what the actual message is. Our expectations in interpreting the message play a vital role than the actual message itself and this is one of the biggest psychological barriers to communication. When a message is at par with the ego involvement of the person, it is readily accepted. But when it is not in accordance with his ego involvement, it is closer to his latitude of rejection and the tendency is greater to exaggerate the discrepancy. The next point is interests and attitudes. Interest and attitudes of people determine the style of communication. Lack of interest often leads to improper or distorted communication. Negative attitude on the other hand leads to misinterpretation and erroneous messages. The next point is attention. Attention to communication is significant in sensing and perceiving the information. The next one is memory. Memory is extremely useful in retaining the information. Memory deficits and issues in psychological processes hinder the process of communication. The next one is mood or emotional state. Mood or emotional state of the person does have an impact on the way one expresses and interprets a message. For example, when a person is in a happy mood, he or she tends to comprehend a message in a positive way compared to the time when the person is in a negative mood. Anger is also a biggest barrier to communication. Stress and frustration also act as barriers to communication. Personality is the next one. In personality, self-image and self-esteem of the person are also important in the way a person is perceiving a message. A person who is highly pessimistic and has a negative self-image usually tends to view his whole world in a negative way. 
other positive and negative personality characteristics and traits of the person also affect the process of communication. The next one is poor listening. Poor listening skills also hinder the communication process. Poor listening can be a result of lack of interest, inattention, multitasking and hearing problems. As listening is the foundation of the process of communication, deviance in this stage leads to the failure of the entire process. The next one is communication apprehension. Approximately 5 to 20 percent of the population suffers from communication apprehension which is also called as social anxiety. These people experience undue tension and anxiety in oral communication and written communication or both. This could act as a barrier in initiating the message and responding to the message accurately. Now we'll move on to the next category of barriers that is socio-cultural barriers. Socio-cultural barriers are related to the cultural and social values created by the people in the society. Culture can be explained as the way of life, attitudes, customs, beliefs and ideas which are shared by a group of people that gets transmitted from one generation to another. As culture is deeply embedded in the society, it has a phenomenal impact on the way people communicate with each other. When people from different cultures and societies interact, there is a potential risk of communication barriers. There are high context cultures and low context cultures which differ in the way they emphasize the role of verbal and nonverbal communication. Let us now discuss some of the factors that create cultural barriers. The first one is gender differences. Gender differences create communication barriers in few situations as both men and women have different styles of communications. According to research, men usually engage in impersonal work-oriented communication whereas women engage in personal, relationship and affect-oriented communication. Perception of messages also vary with gender. The next one is religion and caste differences. Religion and caste differences impact the process of communication. Use of language concerning rituals, traditions, norms, customs and attitudes differ with every culture and create the differences in perception. The next one is socio-economic status differences. When people across social statuses interact, there is a possibility of distortion of message due to the different life experiences, goals, needs, beliefs and values that are akin to social status in the society. The next one is non-verbal behavior. Non-verbal behaviors such as gestures, mannerisms, facial expressions, eye contact and body language differ with every culture thereby creating confusion and misunderstanding while communicating. For example, Japanese people prefer to avoid eye contact with elders as a sign of respect. However, Americans feel disrespectful when eye contact is not maintained. The next one is proximity or space considerations. Proximity or space considerations differ with every culture when engaging in face-to-face -face communication. Proximity may become a barrier if it is not paid attention to. The next one is stereotypes. Stereotypes are rigid, overgeneralized mental ideas about an entire group of individuals or about their behaviors as a whole. For example, all men are aggressive is a stereotype where the aggressive behavior is attributed to all men irrespective of considering other factors. Stereotypes act as a major barrier to communication because people operate from these preconceived notions without attending to the complete message. The next category of barriers to communication are linguistic and semantic barriers. Linguistic barriers occur due to the deficits in linguistic ability and language differences. Semantic barriers are caused due to the differences in interpreting the meaning of verbal and nonverbal communications. Both language and semantic barriers disrupt the ability to listen to the message and understand or process the meaning accurately. Let us now discuss some of the factors under linguistic and semantic barriers. The first one is use of jargons. 
using technical words in communication without giving the meaning will create confusion and message will not be understood in the intended manner this barrier to communication usually occurs when professionals or specialists in any field interact with others who do not possess the relevant knowledge in organizations managers should be mindful of this barrier as it can distort the message being communicated to the subordinates if proper explanation is not provided the next one is language production or comprehension deficits any language production or comprehension deficits such as stammering lagging unclear speech fumbling utterance of improper sounds compromised comprehension due to stroke or any other health conditions can create barriers to communication the next one is language language can itself become a barrier to communication where people of different languages attempt to communicate with each other dialect pronunciation accent tone pitch prosody can also create barriers to communication concerning the language the next one is silence silence can have different connotations and can become a barrier to communication if clarification is not provided the next one is homophones homographs and homonyms homophones are the words having same pronunciation but different spellings and different meanings homographs are the words that have same spellings but mean different things and homonyms are the words having same pronunciation but have different meanings all these three can create barriers to communication the next category of barriers to communication is organizational barriers to communication barriers to communication caused in organizations and by organizations are referred to as organizational barriers to communication organizational barriers tend to occur due to unclear roles and responsibilities rigid rules and procedures flawed structures and practices under this we have power positions authority power and status of an individual in an organization affect communication when people interacting at various levels of hierarchy for example the communication between a manager and his subordinate may become distorted when the subordinate does not seek clarification due to the position of authority of the manager the next one is organizational hierarchy unclear organizational hierarchy can also become a barrier to communication communication gets delayed and distorted if there are number of managerial levels in an organization the next one is organizational policies if organizational policies and procedures do not facilitate smooth flow of communication then they can become barriers to communication in organizations the next one is halo effect halo effect is the tendency to judge or rate a person incorrectly based on the impression on one particular favorable or unfavorable aspect that is observed in the person this is one of the biggest barriers to communication in organizations for example a manager favors an employee because she is good looking and ignore other characteristics the next one is technology technology failure can create blocks in communication in organizations as the communication between employees is mostly channeled through technology as we have transitioned into a global economy technology failure also affects day to day communication between people the next one is time pressure time pressure targets deadlines can also cause errors in communication in organizations as it creates stress for the employees the next category of barriers to communication is message related barriers message related barriers are concerned with the transmission of message between the sender and receiver information can get distorted while drafting a message due to the internal and external factors affecting the sender message can also get distorted while the message is getting transmitted to the receiver through the channel or medium of communication and finally the message can get distorted in getting interpreted by the receiver due to the internal and external factors affecting the receiver let us now discuss some of the message related barriers 
the first one is unclear message or encoding problem if message is not stated or drafted clearly it can create a barrier to communication as the information will not be passed accurately encoding is the process of translating the thought of sending the message into the form that is understood by the receiver many a time people are clear about the message they want to communicate in their head however they make errors while stating it in comprehensible language it takes conscious effort and time from the sender side to draft a message accurately the nature of the receiver should be kept in mind before preparing the message the next one is channels of communication transmission loss occurs when too many channels are involved between the sender and the receiver for example a message given by a ceo in a company may get distorted before it reaches the lowest managerial level if there are several people in the chain of command selection of inappropriate channel of communication also can become a barrier to communication the next one is improper or lack of feedback the process of communication is successful only after it reaches the receiver and a feedback is received from the receiver to the sender without a feedback from the receiver there is always a barrier to communication because the sender experiences uncertainty regarding the appropriateness of the message the next one is information overload information overload is one of the biggest barriers to communication all humans take information through their senses and a part of the message is anyway lost attending to the message selectively and during the process of perception also the message is discounted since there are several mental processes involved in the process of communication it is prudent to share information that is most relevant and in the most direct manner information should always be shared in chunks and the important aspects should be emphasized in order to avoid distortion if prioritizing is not practiced then it can lead to information overload and the purpose of the whole message can be lost the last category of barriers to communication is other barriers past experiences positive or negative of communication also become a barrier to communication by creating rigidity in the process the next one is differential barriers differences in age education needs interest intention or purpose creates a communication gap between the speaker or the writer and the listener or the reader the next one is sender's credibility sender's credibility can also affect the communication if a sender's credibility is high the receiver will interpret the message favorably conversely if the sender is not trusted receiver may try and interpret the message wrongly by deliberately giving hidden meaning to various words and that may itself distort the complete message now that we have understood and finished discussing various categories of barriers to communication there are several ways in which one can overcome barriers to communication however there is nothing as perfect or idealistic communication overcoming barriers to communication is helpful in reducing the gap of uncertainties in the process of communication to conclude today's lesson we have understood the meaning of communication purpose of communication steps in communication process barriers to communication various barriers we have seen and discussed are physical barriers or environmental barriers psychological barriers socio cultural barriers language or semantic barriers organizational barriers message re